Okay. Well. 2020 is gonna be fun. I'm just not holding up a lot of these books for uh, thumbnail. Or if it is or isn't. We tried. Ooh, and then they're, in, they're gonna fall. That's awesome. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing the books I want to read in 2020. And of course, there's 20 on here, but I added another one, but it's all the way over on the floor. So we'll get in that, get to that towards the end. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the books I would like to read in 2020. I don't know if I will get to all of them, but I would like to. So, here we go. Are you guys ready for this? Because some of the books that I have are kind of new, kind of not new, but they're new to me in a way. So, there's that fun ordeal. So, let's go. Alright, the first, well not the first one, but one of the books I really want to read that I got last year was The Witch is Kind by Louisa Morgan. And it's the author of The Secret History of Witches. Ooh, we like that. And that is this gorgeous cover with those fun, fancy page ends on the sides that I really like in a book. So that has me excited. And I will give a little detail on the back that I have on what it's about. A poor grant tale of a family sacrifice and magic in the aftermath of World War II. Two women must conceal their unusual gifts and the mysterious baby they discover by the sea from dangerous men who seek power of their own sinister ends. Now if that does sound intriguing, I don't know what will, but I'm excited. And I think I might say this for Halloween time, for when I do my Hocus Pocus read a thong that I do. So I think I might say this for that time because A, spooky, and B, it's witches that fits the theme. So there's that. Alright, the next book I'm going to talk about that hasn't really came out yet, but it comes out this week on the 7th. Which is Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sin, which is this gorgeous cover. And I will give you the description on here, because like I said, it's not quite out yet, but it's almost out. And I plan on getting it. When Mia rescues a mysterious stranger from drowning, she fears her rash actions have earned her a longer sentence on a debtor ship where she's been held captive for years. Instead, the man she saved offers her unimaginable riches and a new identity. Setting Amia on a perilous course through the coastal city-state of Mora, where old world opponents and desperate gamblers collide. Amaya wants one thing, revenge against the man who ruined her family and stole the life she once had. But the more entangled she becomes in this game of deception, and as her path intertwines with the son of the man she's plotting to bring down, the more she uncovers the, about the truth of her past, and the more she realizes she must trust no one. Packed with high stakes adventure, romance, Dueling Identities, this gender-swapped retelling of The Count of Monte Cristo is the first novel in an epic YA fantasy duology, perfect for fans of Sarah J. Mass, Sabatier, and Lee Bardugo. That has me intrigued right there, and plus, it sounds super good, and I can't wait to grab it soon, so there is that fun detail. Alright, we'll go with back into the other books that I have. Alright, now this one I haven't read 
since middle school slash high school days, so I'm getting back into the world again. It's very popular here on BookTube. I think you might know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe. But it's a good but old school book, and that would be Harry Potter and the Sorcerer Stone by J.K. Rowling. Like I said, it's very popular here, and I really don't need to explain what Harry Potter is about. It's, you know, it's about magic, and he discovers he's a wizard. That's all we really need to know about Harry Potter, so there's that. And so far, I just started it, so I'm up to, like, chapter four. <laughs> Thank you, audio book. But, yeah. Yeah. Memory lane. Just a little bit. Alright, moving along. The next two books, I would like to continue on with the series and to get it done so I could start the third book that's kind of towards the series and this is Siegen and Storm by Leigh Bardugo it's the Krisha verse that follows Alana or Alana Elena however you want to say her name I don't really know but that's how I say it in my head so I need to read the Siegen and Storm and then Ruin and Rising so then I can get to the book about Nikolai, which I haven't exactly met yet in either book, so need to get to reading to both of these. I did read Shadow and Bone last year and I actually liked it, so hoping I like both of these as well so that I can read, what is that one called? Keen of Scars? We're gonna go with it's called Keen of Scars. It actually might be, but I could look it up on my Goodreads, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna say it's King of Scars, and I'm pretty sure it is. Let me double check that because now. Are you really not gonna give me anything? Come on. Show me what I want. It is King of Scars! <laughs> Don't doubt yourself if you don't think that's what it is. That's definitely what it is. Moving on. <laughs> Alright, the next book I want to try to get more into after I finish the first book in this series, which is The Demon World by Sally Green. I've read a little ways into The Smoke Thieves, and so far I like it. Once I can finish that book, I will continue on with the second one. Lies, fear, loyalty, freedom, love. What brings you to the demon world? I'll never tell. <laughs> that sounded cheesy, I'm sorry, but I had to. <laughs> Alright, the other book I'm going to talk about that's not... There's a couple of books on my list here that aren't out yet, but I'm planning on getting them. And one of them is... All Stars and Teeth. Come on. By Adeline Grace. And that is a that gorgeous cover and that alone I like it. I will also give a description for it. Set in a kingdom where danger lurks beneath the sea, mermaids seek vengeance with a song, and the magic is a choice. Adeline Grace's All the Stars and Teeth is a thrilling fantasy for fans of Stephanie Garber's Carnival and Sarah J. Mass Throne of Glass series. Yes! She will region as a princess of Island Kingdom Visidia, but we're gonna go with us with that. <laughs> Amora Monatara has spent her entire life training to be High Acromancer, the Master of Souls, the rest of the realm 
can choose their magic, but for Mora, it's never been a choice to rescue her place as heir to the throne. She must prove her mastery of the monarch's dangerous soul magic. When her demonstration goes awry, Aurora is forced to flee. She strikes a deal with Sebastian, a mysterious pirate. He'll help her prove she's fit to rule if she'll help him reclaim his stolen magic. But, sailing the kingdom holds more wonder and more pearl than Amora anticipated. A destructive new magic is on the rise and Amora is to conquer it. She'll need to face the legendary monsters, cross paths with vengeful mermaids, and deal with a stowaway she never expected or risk the fate of Visa and lose her crown forever. I am the right choice, the only choice, and I will protect my kingdom. And that is All Stars and Teeth, which comes out next month on the 4th. And like I said, it sounds super good, and I'm also wanting to get that. And then the next one I want to get is Sarah J. Mass's new book, which is called Crescent. If I can spell it right on Goodreads. <laughs> Maybe. Fine, we'll look up Sarah J. Mass. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, sometimes Goodreads is a slow. Come on. Okay, what if we do it this way? Okay, good reads. You're driving me crazy. Oh, there we go. Just saying, it'll <laughs> make it pop up. Uh, sorry for the, del the delay, my friends. Really? I didn't want to see that yet. I just want to give a description of Crescent City. But I have a feeling it's not gonna let me. Oh. Got it. Whew! After so long. Alright. House of Earth and Blood is the name of the series. And just look at that gorgeous cover. I ah, need it. And that is coming out March 3rd. So we have a little while to wait. Alright. Alright, in the brand new Crescent City series with the House of Earth and Blood, the story of half-fae and half-human, Bryce Quinn, as she seeks revenge in commentary fantasy world of magic, danger, and searing romance. Bryce Quinlan had a perfect life, working hard all day and partying all night until a demon murdered her closest friends leaving her breathed, wounded, and alone. When the accused is behind bars, but the crimes start up again, Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation. She'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. Hunt Othler is an, a notorious fallen angel now enslaved to archangels. He once admitted to overthrow his brutal skills 
and incredible strength have been set to to one purpose to assassinate his boss's enemies no questions asked but with the demon wreaking a havoc in the city he's offered an irresistible deal help Bryce to find the murderer and his freedom will be within reach as Bryce and Hunt dig deep into the Crescent City underbelly they discover a dark power that threats everything and everyone they hold dear and they find in each other a blazing passion and one that could set them both free if they'd only let it with unforgettable characters sizzling romance and a page turning suspense this originally new inventive new fantasy series by number one new york times best-selling author sarah j mass develops into the heartache of loss price of freedom and the power of love and that is the Crescent City book number one. Yay. All right. And then the next book I'm wanting to read after I finish Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan is her next book called Ruthless God. I'm just going to pull up the cover because I'm still in the middle of the first book and it's a really good are we not going to get it to come up for real let's try that again sorry sometimes goodreads doesn't always connect okay that's when you put it in the first book and then you can find the second one usually and if you haven't read Wicked Saints yet and you're wanting to read it like I said I'm still in the middle of it and I love it I really need to finish it because Nadia she's she's something else I like her and I want to know more about her story of course and Darkness never works alone. True that. That is that cover. Okay. And then the next book I also want to get through is The Diviners by Lippa Bray, which I'm currently in the middle of. And so far, I really like it. Do you believe there are ghosts and demons and diviners? Among Us? Evie O'Neill has been exiled from her boring old hometown and shipped off to bustling streets of New York City. And she is post positively ecstatic. It's 1926 and New York is filled with speakeasies, zigified girls, and rackishes pickpockets. The only catch is that she has to live with her uncle Will and his unhealthy obsession with the occult. Evie worries he'll discover her darkest secret, a supernatural power that has only brought her trouble so far. But when the police call Will to the crime scene of her murdered girl Brandon with a cryptic symbol, Evie realizes her gift could help catch a serial killer. As Evie jumps headlong into a dance with a murderer, other stories unfold in the city that never sleeps. And, unknown to all, something dark and evil has awakened. Now that just sounds, you know, right up my alley. And like I said, I'm currently in the middle of it now, and I am liking it by far. Alright, the other book I want to pick up, which I just got the audiobook for, so I'm going to start it very, very soon, and that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I've heard nothing but good things about this book, how people have given it either 4.5, I believe, or 5 out of 5 stars, so that says to me that people are loving the series, and that it's really good and worth the read, so I'm hoping that's what this one is for me bold 
valence just do you have what it takes to be a hero well what's your status nightmare nova checked that the alley was empty before lifting the lid of a dumpster and hauling herself up onto its edge her duffel bag greeted her resting at the top of the heap just grab me my things she said snatching the bag i'll be on the rooftop in two minutes make it one said phoebe you have a superhero to kill that's i like to read the back sometimes before i read you know what's in the front of the book because sometimes Either one will usually have me hooks, but sometimes it's usually the back part of the book instead of the front part of the book, but I'll usually check both, but in this case, I just went with the back, so there's that little detail of Renegades. <clears throat> and then, let's see, I also want to get into... A Casey West book which is called the the fill-in boyfriend I got it used at my library it was in the cell thing to go so you know I picked the fat up when Gia Montgomery's boyfriend Bradley dumps her in the parking lot of her high school prom she has to think fast after all she's been telling her friends about him for months now this was supposed to be the night she proved he existed so when she meet when she sees a cute guy waiting to pick up his sister, she enlists his help. The simp the task is simple. Be her fill in boyfriend two hours, zero commitment, a white lies after that she can win back the real Bradley. The problem is the days the problem is the day the days after prom is not the real Bradley she's thinking about about the stand-in, the one whose name she doesn't even know. But tracking him down doesn't mean they're done faking a relationship. Chia owes him a favor, and his sister intends to see that he collects. His ex-girlfriend's graduation party, three hours of zero commitment. A few white lies. Just when Gia begins to wonder if she could turn her fake boyfriend into a real one, Bradley comes waltzing back into her life, exposing her lie and threatening to destroy her friendships and her newfound relationship. Now that sounds exciting and a cute maybe summer or spring read, so we're here for that. Alright. Let me just kind of talk about that one. Dragons. Oops. If I can spell. No, yeah, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I have it in my bookshelf, but I forgot to grab it. So at this part, I'm just gonna be lazy and show the picture, which is called *The Dragons: A Price* by Bethany Wiggins looks super good and of course uh dragons all right this wrath and dawn will devour the action-packed fantasy adventure about a girl who chooses to surrender herself to a deadly dragon rather than marry an enemy prince. When two warning kingdoms unfight against a deadly menace lying waste to both their lands, they have to make a choice, a vow to marry their heirs to one another or forfeit the, their lives to a dragon. Centuries later, everyone expects the sheltered princess Sorolin to choose the bargain prince over the fire breathing beast everyone that is except sorrow who is determined to control her own destiny or die trying as she is lured into the dragon's chamber 
She assumes her life is over until Glomar, the young prince she just spurned, follows her with the hopes of being her hero and slaying the dragon. But the dragon has a different plan. If the dragon wins, it will be freed from the spell that has bonded it to the cave for centuries. If Sorrow or Glomar vanquishes the dragon, the victor will gain its treasure and escape the cave beneath the mountain. But what exactly is the dragon hiding? There are no safe heavens for Sorrow or Glomar, not even with each other, and the stakes couldn't be higher as they risk everything to protect their kingdom. And that is the dragon's prize, which is this a beautiful, gorgeous cover. I also got it at a library sale because we love ten cent books as well. All right. The other book I really want to get into is *The Starless Sea* by Erin Morgenstern. She's also the author of *The Night Circus*, which I really did not like but I am hoping to get into this one and it sounds super good I've heard good things and the cover beneath the dust jacket is gorgeous and so is the spine and then the end papers oh Far beneath the surface of the earth, upon the shores of the starless sea, there is a labyrinth collection of tunnels and rooms filled with stories. The entranceways that lead to the sanctuary are often hidden, sometimes on the forest floors, sometimes in private homes, sometimes in plain sight. But those who will seek will find. The doors have been waiting for them. Zachary Israel Rollins is searching for his door. Though he does not know it, he follows a silent siren song, an inexpectable certainty that he is meant for another place. When he discovers or discoveries <laughs> discovers a mysterious book in the stacks of his campus library, he begins to read and is entranced by tales of Lovelorn prisoners, lost cities, nameless acolytes. Suddenly, a turn of the page brings Zachary to a story from his own childhood, and possibly written in this book that is older than he than he is. And that's all I'm gonna give the description for the Starless Sea because, again, it sounds really good, and I've given multiple <laughs> descriptions on this book for what it is. I think it's in one of my uh, book hauls. I'm not sure which one, but I definitely have the audiobook for this, so I might get to it sooner rather than later. So, yay! And then the next one I want to get into is a Blood Air by Amelia Winshow, I think. But I keep seeing this everywhere, and I think it's secretly telling me you need to read this, so we're going to listen to that little inner voice. A princess with a deadly gift. A con man with no past and no future. An empire spiraling into chaos. It's time to choose a side. And like I said, I've been seeing this everywhere, and it sounds super good, so... I think I may pick it up next month. That is my hope. Will it happen? Oh, we don't know. We shall see. The other book series I really need to finish slash get more into, which is A Life Life by Jay Kristoff. Your life is not your own. A robot may not injure a human being or through in action. Allow a human being to come to harm. Your body is not your own. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Your mind is not your own. A robot must protect 
own existence as long as such as protection does not conflict with the first and second laws. Your life is not your own. And that is this one, and I believe the third book is coming out this year, so I need to read the first and the second one before I can get to the last one. Or, I don't know if it's the last one, but I'm assuming. And if you haven't read anything about Jay Kristoff, um, first off, please do. He's the author of Nevernight series and another series before Nevernight, which I haven't gotten to, so... Sorry, don't hurt me. Not that you would. But anyway. Alright. And then the next book I really need to finish that I started last year that I just decided I didn't want to continue on with it just yet. But this year I really need to. And again, I'm too lazy to get the actual book. But that is Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen Queen. It's basically something weird that happens with the woman in that town and just a lot of things start to happen in a future so re real and near it may it might be now something happens when women go to sleep they become shrouded in a cocoon like gauze if they are awakened and the gauze wrapping their bodies is disturbed or violated the women become feral and spectacularly violent and while they go to sleep they go to another place the men of our world are abandoned left to their increasingly primal devices one woman however the mysterious evie is immune to the blessing or curse of the sleeping disease is evie a medical ominal to be studied or is she a demon who must be slain now that again sounds super good and then the next book I want to try to finish reading more of is The Priory of the Orange Tree. We pretty much by now know what it, it's about. It's a big beast of a book, I will say that. And I'm hoping to get through it eventually this year and knock it out of the park. So that is the last one that is on my 2020 reading goals for this year. Like I said, I would like to get to all of them. I don't know if I exactly will. Here's to hoping anyway. So there's that. And if you guys are new here to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe right down there and the notification bell so you don't miss further videos from me for when I post. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much about all I got at this point. So, there's that fun little clip. And I will see you guys in my next video. So, I hope you guys are having a good day or night. And, of course, always get that unexpected reading in because that's good. And I just lost a few things out of my book. That's awesome. Alright, I will see you guys in a new one. Goodbye!